Welcome viewers, Peter, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisum Campus. I want to apologize once again for the quality of the video, but all the same, I believe in the simplicity and in simple ways we generate impact and we create great ideas and things. Today's topic rather is on the fifth stage of development in the African legal system and traditions. And this stage is about jurists. In the previous submissions, we have looked at the missionaries, we have looked at the anthropologists and the colonial administrators. Today, rather, we look at, I would call it, the very founders of the African jurisprudence. This brings us to the acknowledgement of the initiatives from the non-African jurists. That is Professor Anthony Nicholas Allot, the founder of African law. When Allot was appointed to chair the African law department at the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS, at the University of London, he enabled his peers to acknowledge not only the existence of the African legal system, but also the dignity that it deserves. In terms of other legal systems, the quality when it comes to the knowledge of justice and the administration of justice. He referred to it as the law of the people, as opposed to the law of the state. A lot in his time had acknowledged the disaster created by the British law and the English legal system that was becoming over influential in the to be independent African states or the former British colonies. But in appreciation, he spoke greatly about the law of the people, the law of the African people. He carried out his practical research on the Akan customary law in Ghana. He made adverse, huge contribution to the land law jurisprudence in the Republic of Ghana. Professor Arlott remains vivid in our memory as one of the law scholars that gave meaning to African law. He attracted during his time Professor Eugene Cotran, another Briton. Eugene Cotran, in his memoir Conversing with a lot makes the following remark, and I quote, How can I restate a legal system of which I don't know the culture, I don't know the people, I have not interacted with such people, with their traditions? Close the quote. This is again to make us have what we call a genuine reaction from non-African jurists about issues of law which must be very contextualized and based and pegged on the traditions of the people, the sociological organization or structures of such African societies way that we refer to them using the colonial references such as native people, indigenous people, or traditional Africans. Those are just decorations, but what is substantive is that these people had legal framework, they had legal mechanisms to deal with their disputes, to deal with the justice system and also to deal with their political structures, their economic structures and social structures. 
they had social order in place, some political order in place, and legal order in place. According to the duo, this was sufficient to equate African law with British law. And it is in this perspective we find a lot and Cotran being the ones that decided to advocate for the African jurisprudence at the universities and institutions for high learning during that time. But the duo could not make sense without the third one, and this is Professor Elias Taslim Olawale, whose dissertation, which was published in 1956 on the nature of the African customary law, impressed the legal community among the legal academics, law scholars, law professors, teachers of law, but also the judicial officers, judges, magistrates, as well as politicians. The work of Olawale joins the duo to form the trio. As we say in the African slogans and metaphors that the three firestorms make us have our food on the table and they form the foundation of the African legal thought and they nurtured the African jurisprudence as a small baby till today we are addressing ourselves, our discourses, looking at our legal systems in various independent African modern states, the modern law, the state law, and also different types of legal systems and thoughts. This again is helping us to dismiss certain characterizations that people use while referring to the African law as the African customary law, or rather customary law, the native law, the indigenous law, or the law of the people. We need to come up smart when it refers to the terminologies, the wording of our language of law. Some people refer to African law as non-state law. I find this not accurate because in many states in Africa, customary law of the people is still respected and recognized by the principal state organs, the institutions of the state, the government. And we cannot claim that this is a non-state law. Some people refer to it as informal law. This is also misleading because we cannot stand tall while thinking in lines of the state law as formal because it is written and the law of the people as informal because it is not written and in that case we are not understanding the entire or holistic picture and knowledge about justice and the justice system as it works. We need to know and acknowledge that alternative justice is meant to be part of the justice system in its entirety. Just as the official and formal, if you call it, judicial systems. But we have also the customary judicial systems. The judicial system of the people, how the people deal with their issues. But again, to wrap this one up, a lot himself admits that the law of the people is opposed or is different from the state law. Both should be complementary in forming a robust and substantive 
legal system for any democratic modern state. In my knowledge, this is seen in the processes we have seen already of constitution making. And the constitutions of various independent African countries today are subjected to a lot of review and also some are subjected to referendum. Because this is a process that should be legitimate, should be agreeable to the people that we refer to as the citizens. And it is not the question of the natives versus the colonials. This is again to decolonize our legal systems, but most importantly to decolonize our legal scholarship and the teaching of law, the training of lawyers, and our legal education policies. It is a way of enabling us to do an assessment on the impact law has on the society, the impact the law has on the development, development of the government as an agenda, the vision of the government as an agenda, policy making in general, the national cohesion and integration, social order, and some level of dignity and integrity of our systems. And we need as law teachers to account for the work we are doing and also to showcase of the impact legal education is creating in the quality of justice as a service to the people, the quality of administration as a service to the people, and also the quality of how the justice system operates. Thank you for watching. Peter here, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisumu Campus. I still urge you to subscribe to this video snapshots and bye for today. Thank you.